Hi, I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on a pretty hard challenge that our Equinox and SRI team is taking on. And that is, how can we do massively scalable monitoring of containerized applications to identify when containers become unstable or subverted? And when these situations arise, how can we capture enough fine-grained digital forensics to drive an incident response or a fault analysis? Now, if you're a security analyst, you're most likely going to try to solve this using some depth of application or process monitoring to analyze what your application is doing. For container DevOps environments, you'll likely be looking to use eBPF-based tracing services, such as tools like Sysdig and Chisel. These tools extend a host kernel with logic to trap key system calls, letting us capture syscall forensics at runtime to see exactly what the application is up to. We'll probably also want to save the forensic data so that we can later perform whatever damage assessment or incident analyses that we need, depending on the situation. Also, for efficiency, we'll typically configure Sysdig and Chisel to capture key system calls that are most useful for security and incident analyses. Actually, the real challenge that we'll immediately encounter in production container environments is scalability. Process monitoring and forensic logging will drive up our CPU cost, plus the cost of log transport and storage. Particularly in production container environments that don't just run one instance of the application, but potentially run hundreds or even thousands of instances, we really need a breakthrough idea on how to detect when the app becomes unstable, how to collect the digital forensics to understand why, and again, scalability here is the key. So, our team's approaching this problem using a deep learning algorithm called a Variational Autoencoder, or a VAE. The concept is to train two neural networks to recognize when a process is behaving normally via its system call patterns. Then, during these normal interval patterns, we can optimize the forensic stream publisher to essentially publish just an abstraction of this behavior pattern. With the VAE, we can build a smarter forensic publisher, one that detects intervals when we can simply characterize and report the observed normal runtime patterns from periods when the app isn't following any learned pattern. And then, it'll publish those forensic windows to run analytics to search for potential issues. Basically, when the VAE sees a runtime interval it's never seen before, we like to save that full forensic stream around the interval so that we can run analytics to understand why. Here, we're using the neural net to build a runtime specification of normal behavior and then let it drive our decisions regarding how much forensic detail to publish. And I'll show you how this basic idea has an amazing effect on massively scaling app monitoring services. To learn the application's behavior, we'll train the VAE using eBPF forensic data collected during controlled runs or runs scrutinized to ensure that they represent normal operating patterns. These raw forensics aren't fed directly to the neural net, but rather are put through a preprocessor or summarizer, which calculates various syscall statistics during each runtime segment, say every 30 seconds, and then feeds these vectors to the VAE training process. At regular runtime intervals, new app activity is fed to the encoder, which is a convolutional neural network. The CNN reduces the input to a smaller vector that we'll call an interval model, or M. The decoder takes M as its input, and using its own CNN, it tries to rebuild the original activity vector that was input to the encoder. We then compare the original activity vector, the input to the encoder, against the decoder's reconstructed activity vector, producing an error metric. A small reconstruction error indicates that the encoder and decoder understood the activity vector well enough to accurately encode and decode the vector. Larger reconstruction errors occur when the VAE receives activity patterns that it's never seen before. We really want to massively scale up application monitoring, and the VAE gives us an extremely fast and robust ability to track unstable runtime behavior among containerized applications. When one of the apps is not stable, that's when a smart forensic publisher should forward the fine grained digital forensics needed to review whether the app is experiencing a fault or a security event. So, let's do a cost comparison between a standard but performance-aware forensic publisher that caches and block publishes application forensic streams versus a VAE-optimized publishing service. For the experiment, I used a test container running an app called Focal, which is a syscall test generator used by the Felco project. The Git link is to the right. To do performance comparisons that vary the workload, I incremented by 10 the number of instances of Focal that I ran on my host, from 10 to up to 50 instances. You could see on this chart the average number of total system calls that the containers collectively produced on my host per 30 second time interval. For the experiment, I instrumented the host kernel with eBPF and Sysdig to capture about 70 security related system calls that I spoke about earlier. 
Sysdig produced a separate forensic log per container. So the idea is to record those logs into our forensic repo, which was implemented using Elasticsearch. A baseline forensic publisher was then fed the stream, cached the events locally, and then used the Elasticsearch Fast Bulk Write API to push the records to the Elasticsearch server. Then we ran the same experiment using the VAE optimized forensic publisher. Let's check out the results. I'm going to show a per interval CPU cost comparison under different workloads. Perf was used to compute just the CPU cycles involved in locally processing and publishing the forensic data to Elasticsearch per 30 second interval. I'm also driving the workloads in a manner that is similar to how it was trained. So yes, the VAE is consistently finding the apps to be operating in a stable manner. I'll talk about the alternative next. This bottom left table shows the number of CPU cycles that were consumed on our host to process and publish the forensics. The table compares the CPU cost per 30 second interval in billions or trillions of CPU cycles. This might be a little hard to evaluate, so let's take a quick look at how these numbers translated to the average processing time per interval. Here we can also start to observe the notion of saturation. If our cache interval is set to 30 seconds, but the processing time to publish an interval starts to exceed 30 seconds, the forensic publishing will become overwhelmed and will never be able to catch up. So here, after a bit more than 50 containers, the standard method would take longer to publish an interval's data than the interval itself. On the other hand, the VA optimized publisher takes on average only 510 milliseconds to process the intervals involving the 50 container instances. But CPU cost isn't the only expense we're going to incur when producing fine-grained system call streams. An Elasticsearch server was used to host the forensic data that each test produced. The left table shows the average volume of data that was sent over the network to the local Elasticsearch instance during the five-minute experimental runs. Here I'm citing the size of the package streams that were sent from the standard NVAE publishers to Elasticsearch. At 50 containers, you can see that the standard publisher sent 6 gigabytes of network traffic over the network every 5 minutes, which would be a 72 gig stream per hour. The actual total bytes that Elasticsearch integrates into the data store during each 5 minute test is shown here in the table to the right. Let's recap with a quick resource cost comparison by focusing on the heaviest workload we tested, which was the deployment of the 50 instances of the Folco container in our test host producing an average of 90 system calls per 30 second interval. Here is the performance breakdown of how well the VA optimized forensic publisher stacked up against the standard publisher. The VAE's CPU cost and processing time outperformed the standard publisher by two orders of magnitude. In fact, the standard publisher nearly reached its saturation point at 50 containers, while the VAE publisher barely broke half a second of per interval processing time. The VAE publisher also reduced network traffic production by three orders of magnitude at least during these tests, where the production runtime did not differ significantly from the trained runtime. Finally, the VAE reduced the data storage cost by four orders of magnitude over the standard publisher, as publishing the VA activity model to abstractly summarize the stable intervals resulted in a dramatic reduction compared to storing the full forensic stream. By the way, even after the massive CPU cost and the network cost and the storage cost that you experience using the standard publication method, we still don't know which containers were operating in a stable and expected manner and which were not. We still have to run Elasticsearch analytics over all that data to figure that out. So the full cost isn't really known yet, but the VAE system identifies unstable and anomalous behavior patterns as an integrated part of its operation. That's a pretty huge win on top of an overall dramatic cost savings. Another ongoing aspect of the work is demonstrating that distinguishing stable from unstable activity is robust, and we're conducting evaluations that demonstrate this. Here's a simple example using the VAE trained against an Nginx web server, where I begin performing a series of operations that slowly push the container outside the trained runtime experience. I begin the experiment with a period of normal operations, during which the VAE is producing a very small reconstruction error as it monitors Nginx. Now, I'll begin testing stability by launching a shell, which the VAE has not observed during training, resulting in a spiked reconstruction error. This is good, as the VAE gives an immediate anomaly notification and begins delivering its full cache forensics automatically. And, as I begin using the shell, causing a stream of new system calls, the reconstruction error spikes dramatically. I'm now going to download and compile a remote app, 
In this case, I've grabbed a CPU miner, which hackers often install into hijacked containers to mine Bitcoin. The VAE produces an astronomical reconstruction error as it continues to fully publish the digital forensics for the incident analysis that should no doubt follow. Finally, I replace Nginx with CPU miner, causing the VAE to continue digital forensics publishing indefinitely, at least until I restore the container back to Nginx. I can do similar demonstrations for app hijacking, hardware failures, infrastructure faults that impact the container, network attacks, and a lot more. But the point is, a robust VAE lets us dynamically manipulate the depth and volume of forensics that get published depending on the extent to which the app breaks from its normal behavior patterns. And here the patterns are fine-grained at the level of system calls. Using VA optimization to do stability analysis in smart forensic publishing, we think we could push deep process level monitoring and digital forensics collection to very large container ecosystems that really can't be monitored at this level today. Let me know if you'd like to learn more about where we stand with our code releases. Feel free to email me here or visit our website. Thanks.